Welcome to the July 21st, 2020 episode of Reactive Consciousness, the in-depth uh, podcast about this week in our lives. Good Man. enough. This show must go Stuck on. the landing. Going. I am your host, Vise the Bold. Fake until I make it. <laughs> and, and this is Lotus Fritz, I guess. <laughs> fuck it, oh, we're oh, doing shit. it live. I, I, Justin, I mean Lotus Fritz. Uh, oh, son of a... Andrew, oh wait, no, that's you. Yeah, uh... <laughs> See, it's okay to mess up. If you try to make it part of the act. No, no, no. I, I think what you, you what you meant to say is that that was all part of the act. <laughs> uh, nothing to see here, folks. Uh... <laughs> Go. <laughs> Go away, kid. You bother me. Um, <laughs> I love that. You know what's actually really funny about that is uh, I recently picked up the trade paperback uh, for the Mask comic book. So like Which Dark is Horse. tangentially similar to the movie. <laughs> <laughs> it's it has like almost nothing to do with the movie. Like Stanley so. Ipkiss does in fact go to that car dealership and like fucking kill people with those mufflers, like the movie implied. But like otherwise, I don't know. Yeah, like in the, in the comic, like he he just straight up is like murdering people constantly. <laughs> yeah, in the movie, he only murdered people the one time yeah. <laughs> that I'm aware of <laughs> <laughs> with mufflers. Yeah, they're um, they're fucking dead. <laughs> <laughs> but uh. Uh, I don't know. They made him look like him in the movie, so that 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 that's something. Yep. Um, and that that was a time in which, you know, they only had the bare minimum of CG in the movie too. So Stanley um, Ipkiss like doesn't even remain the main character of the mask in the comics. Yeah, he's only the he's only the main character for the first miniseries. Which it's is... like Shredder being the iconic Ninja Turtles villain when he was like <laughs> their first villain, and that's kind it's of like it. Shin, <laughs> Shin and uh, yeah. When North I first Star, saw yeah. Fist of the North Star, I thought Shin was gonna be like the big much bad longer. Li- Apparently, he they finished dealing with him in like volume one of the manga. Yeah. It's like oh, yeah. oh. it's the like it's like Obama. JoJo Part One. You, you pick up volume two or three of the manga, and you're like, oh, it's over. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's not like somebody like Dio who's who's like e- even after he's gone, which you know he cu- he's he's the main villain in two of the um two of the major parts. Yeah, did you forget he was a vampire? He's just back. But <laughs> like not only crap. that, but like you feel his presence in the rest of it. You know, like he, he what yeah they what they name drop him in part two. Um, I forgot how they did it with part four. There must have been something. Maybe oh no oh yeah yeah they they mentioned the effects his butt of flesh. Uh, his buds of flesh had in part four part yeah. five they talk about the arrow which is from part four part six they mention that he knew poochie <laughs> it just keeps going uh oh, part seven uh there's another brando yeah um, there's there's not dio brando in part seven <laughs> yeah yeah part he eight is the only like one him. that i'm just waiting for something yeah yeah well you said that's a, it's supposed to be like an alternate reality version of four right it feels like it yeah Oh, uh, like is there like a monster of a week kind of thing going on? There kind what? of is, and yeah. you know the main guy is Josuke, and we haven't met Again? Kira yet, but we know that there's a Kira. So, uh, uh well, I, I I haven't even met Kira in my in my uh, original reading yet. Oh, but, just um, you wait. <laughs> but anyway, uh, they just dispatched a uh, Red Hot Chili Pepper, so I'm pretty yeah, happy. Finally, uh, I've gotten much more powerful now. You'll never be able to <laughs> just immediately clobber. So he's like, oh fuck! It's so, I love um, that part. Uh, a lot of chit chat here, but yes. <laughs> we have a recon to get on, get on with here. So, um, I actually had a, a we we ended up delaying uh, uh, recording because, um, like, right before we were about to record, they they announced the uh, Nintendo Direct, um, which is usually like even the minis are usually like chock full of news. Um, like even the minis, like people are like, why do they even call these minis anymore? And, uh, <laughs> this, this was a mini, <laughs> let me tell you. Um, and it was for like a lot of stuff that isn't coming out anytime soon, uh, which, which kind of stinks. Um, there, there's a couple things I like in here, but like, it, it, it's, it's a shame, um, for the most part. And it, I, I feel like, uh, Nintendo really is taking on the chin from the COVID stuff. Um, but 
anyway. Um, the, the first announcement was uh, DLC packs for uh, Cadence of Hyrule, Crypt of the Necrodancer um, uh, crossover that they did. did. Have you ever played uh, Crypt, Crypt of the Necrodancer? No, nah, not my thing. Oh, I would I would think that you would be into that. Um, the whole game on a rhythm, point. like, uh, I, don't, I don't know. It's very stressful. <laughs> like, I mean, I might consider Cadence of Hyrule because... Like, from what I hear, it's not nearly as punishing as Crypt of the Necrodancer. Well, Crypt of the Necrodancer is, like, a roguelike, and um, uh, Cadence of Hyrule has a persistent world, and, like, every everything stays the same. Like, okay. like it, enemies will regenerate, but, like... Uh, like there's a there's a solid map. It's the the map is the same all the time. And it, when you solve a um, a square of the map, it, it it continues on. You know that kind of thing. So, sure. um, so it's a lot better. But the music is godly. I don't know if you listen to any of the. Well, um, I would hope it's good, considering that's like the entire thing. <laughs> like like the entire game is on a beat. Yeah, so. yeah. But normally, like uh, I I I like um, some Zelda remixes, but I I. Pre- tend to prefer the originals, but the stuff in Cadence of Hyrule is on another level. It's really, really fucking good. Nice. Um, so, uh, they they have, like, a listen mode, you know, like kind of like a sound test mode sure. now that they're adding, which is actually really neat. Um, and they're adding new characters to the game, which is also really cool. Uh, $5.99 uh, for the pack today is a character pack. Um, it uh, adds Impa, uh, which is really neat. Arya, which I think is a character from Cadence of, or from from Nick Crip of the Necrodancer, uh, Shadow Link and Shadow Zelda, Shadow Zelda, like brand new, huh. yeah. and uh, somebody named Frederick um, to the game uh, with new abilities and weapons. Uh, the next uh, one will ha- be the Melody Pack, which is uh, five ninety nine. Uh, this isn't out yet, but it, it's coming. Uh, this pack will add. 39 songs to the game, including remixed versions of the game's background music, and uh, and the music can be changed at any time. Um, you know which which ones you want to uh, want to be included. Yeah, I like so stuff that, like that. It's really good. Uh, and the last one that they're putting out is the major update, uh, the major DLC update, which is 9.99. It's uh, Symphony of the Mask. Uh, it will add uh, you as Majora's Mask's uh, Skull Kid. <laughs> as a character, and uh, he has a his own map and new songs, like a whole new game. Does basically. he have uh, an annoying scream when he doesn't get what he wants? <laughs> is he is he terrifying? Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and he can change abilities depending on what masks he's wearing, which Ooh, is pretty cool. Very uh, nice. So there's a little bit of Majora's Mask ish kind of stuff in there. Uh, you can also get a season pack for four ninety nine. I would just recommend getting that. I mean, why not? So uh, I'm I'm pretty excited about be- that because I have Cadence of Hyrule. I I like Cadence of Hyrule a lot better than the original game because the original game is just so goddamn hard, um, especially for me. Uh, so uh, I really like that. Uh, yeah, you, you you basically have no time to make your decisions uh, in that in games like that. You have to really know um, how the enemies react in. Um, in uh, Crypt of the Necrodancer, like you, you need to know how to attack each enemy, and 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 you you basically have to have it in the back of your head. This is the the plan of attack for each type of mm-hmm. enemy. You have to go around them in a certain way. And yeah, like the only time you get to breathe is like when the when splash you, page for everything. a boss comes up, and you're like, okay. <laughs> Well, once you cleared everything in a in a specific room, um, you can only you can only chain for so long. Okay. Um, um in this game, um, once you once you clear a room, then then it, it, it stops counting your your uh, your rhythm. So anyway, um, that that was one of the exciting announcements. Uh, so that that'll give you the uh, um, the tone for it. Um, also, they have a new game called uh, Rogue Company that looks like it's a, a third person shooter. Looked a little on the cheap side. Um, I don't know if you saw anything on that, but um, the name Rogue Company sounds generic, like some army yeah. game. Yeah, I, I I get the feeling this is for the younger generation. Um, maybe uh, you know, for people who really like you know Call of Duty ish kind of stuff. Um, it 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 had some cool elements, just you know, from from the way it looked, but it it looked pretty generic. Uh, like the art assets, like just didn't didn't pop to me. Um, and this was kind of interesting. I I I am like, um, like uh, wrestling adjacent. 
Like I I I like the good stuff about wrestling and none of the bad stuff, <laughs> um, which it, most of it's garbage. Yes, hey, I was going to say. So you talk to Old Man Stompy and he tells oh, you what you should really be focusing it, on. <laughs> it, it's like it's like being um like and anything from like 4chan back in the day. Not not 4chan now, and it's a it's a garbage heap now. But um, well, it was like kind that, of a garbage heap then, but not quite the same way. <laughs> yeah, in different ways. Um. But uh, yeah, like back back then, um, uh, like I would, I would get it filtered b- by you know mo- mostly by our friend group, um, and, yeah. and like that that's the good stuff. Like I, I didn't care about anything else. Um, but my point being, uh, WWE 2K Battlegrounds is coming out, and this looks to be uh, an arcadey um, wrestling title uh, with um, you know official WWE. Um, wrestlers on it, and it has like um, a lot of legendary characters, you know, or uh, le- legendary uh, wrestlers from the past, like uh, Andre the Giant's one of the main, main people you could be in it. Um, so it's like a four-player fun arcadey one, uh, not not too unlike. Uh, it looks to even be more arcadey than Superstars, which was really goddamn arcadey. Um, I don't I don't remember the name, but I remember one of the N64 games was extremely arcadey, like the four-player fighting one. Yeah, and that's what Superstars was based on, basically. Okay. Um, uh, Superstars is like the game to play if you liked games from that era. Um, like it, it like the ca- characters have a, a cartoonish look to them, and it's easy to play, and it's a lot of fun. Um, and like a lot of the moves are over the top rather than realistic, you know, yeah. that kind of thing. Um, so this looked like fun, but it, it, it it's basically like a, a party game uh, rather than like a wrestling game, and I'm okay with that. I'd rather it be that way. Um, but the only other, and this is where it it, it gets kind of um, uh, funny, is that the, the, there's only like one major, uh, I guess two major announcements here um, left, and uh, one is like a, uh, this was actually a really nice surprise. Uh, they are um, they announced Shin Megami, Megami Tensei Three Nocturne. Is coming to the Switch. Uh, yeah, an HD an remaster. Because this was a PS2 that. game. This is from back in yeah. the day, so this is pretty significant. And and it's a beautiful looking. Uh, they made it look really good. Um, and this is one of the coolest looking games, art style wise. Um, so uh, a an upscaling and remaster is definitely very much appreciated. Um, and one of one of the big questions I've seen being asked, like not as a joke. Is if it's still gonna like have Dante from Devil May Cry in it? Yeah, uh, all points um, point to no, and and I'll tell you why. Because um, in a later versions of the game in Japan, uh, they did like a re-release after oh. that. They added uh, Kai's, uh, what's his name um, from from Devil Summoner, uh, Kaizio. Uh, whatever, I don't know. Um, what whatever the the one from like the alternate like 1920s timeline. Sure. sure. Um, he he replaced Dante uh, okay. in, in that version. Uh, I think it was Maniacs is, is is what that version is, and we 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 got the one with Dante. Um, but when they when they lost like the licensing deal or, or the permission to use Dante, uh, they uh, replaced him with that. Uh, he is in, in the actual uh, trailer of the of of the remaster. Okay. okay. Um, the newer character so uh unless both of them are in there which i yeah probably I, not I, if dante I, I, was I there then out. they'd probably feature him pretty prominently i mean it's not to say that uh sega and atlas um you know don't get along or anything like that or um i mean atlas and uh capcom don't get along uh you know sega sega atlas and, and capcom don't get along but you know who knows but uh i'm sure it's just just easier to do it this way um and they don't have to do a licensing deal every time they re-release it now. Um, also, we found out that at the same time, if you were following other um, like uh, news venues, uh, that this is also coming to PS4 as well as Switch. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So um, this is exciting um, because this is one of the m- most loved um, games in the series by hardcore fans. From what I've heard, it's also one of the harder ones. It's probably the hardest game. Um, the um, The main thing that people are wondering is if they are going to tweak uh, the um, inconveniences of it, though. It, it, not only is it hard, but it's inconvenient on top of everything. Like a sure. lot of the um, 
uh, number one thing is when you do um, the fusions, every time you would do a fusion, uh, you wouldn't know what um, what abilities would carry you through. They would be random, Ugh. and and you would have to uh, destroy your, your fusion and then restart again, and just keep doing it until you got the, the combination you wanted, which is really stupid, because... Well, yeah, because like, you're going to get what you want by resetting and reloading anyway, so they may as well just tell you what happens. Ex exactly, and, well, you... you I mean, it was to the point where you can dump your fusion, whatever whatever came out, you could you could just cancel it. So at least you didn't have to reload your game, like in even earlier titles. Uh -huh. um, but you would still need to do that until you you know the right one popped out. Yeah, it's um, obnoxious. It, it's a pain in the ass. Uh, once once uh, once uh, I, for, I forget which was the first game that w that had fusions that where you could just pick exactly what you wanted. Um, I think it was the Persona games started doing that, and uh, uh, it carried through to um, Megami Tensei, uh, Shin Megami, Megami Tensei 4. Um, but yeah, th that, that, that was really bad, and there's also um, random battles in towns, um, which is ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. I've only ever seen that happen like as a gimmick. Like when a town has been overrun, or sure. like that one part of Earthbound where the whole thing it's was weird and creepy, and it was just a mess with you. <laughs> I think they really wanted to um, hammer down that this was a, a, a the world is a sh is a shit fire, and uh, yeah, like, yeah. It, it, not even a town is is a safe place. But also, man, I gotta save my game or I like know, heal up. Come on. Uh, so uh, I I think they they're hoping that is the case and i think it will be because uh they want they want people to buy this not just like the hardcore people um and there's a lot to love about the game even if you change that stuff it, that that's not part of the game that people love it's 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 people uh, like even people who love the game don't like that um so uh you could just make those two tweaks and like the game would be a lot better um, so, also, they're rescuing, uh, this game is also really expensive now, like, the PS2, uh, version of the game, so, uh, this is, this is really great, like, I, I think it was, like, over $100 to buy a copy of Nocturne. Uh, it had a very low print run because, um, it was the first Shin Megami Tensei game released in a very lo long time since, um, what, Persona 2, I think, was the last... Uh, one in the U.S. that that was released, so it was kind of a gamble for Atlas to release this in the United States, and it turned out to be a cult hit. Yeah, uh, like e they even said it in the trailer, like the 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 cult hit from like '98 is coming back, you know, that, <laughs> like that kind of thing, or uh, w w whatever year. No, 2003. I'm sorry, '98 uh, was way too early. Um, but yeah, yeah no, I mean, that would have been PS1. <laughs> yeah, that would have been PS1. Yeah, you're right. That would have been Final Fantasy VIII. <clears throat> yep. Um. But uh, this wasn't really an announcement because this is this has also been around. Uh, the, the, this was um, three was a was was totally uh, a new thing. Um, you know, we didn't know about this, but they they also re uh, released more footage, another trailer of uh, Shin Megami Tensei Five while they were at it. Um, so uh, that that all looked pretty cool, um, and. Uh, you know, but here's the thing: they're they're both not releasing until next year, so it's yeah. not like. Um, but they also reiterated the N Nintendo did something that they normally don't do, and they basically were trying to calm everybody's fears. They said, "Don't worry, this is not the last Nintendo Direct of the year." Oh, um, okay. There's like many more uh, third party and first party announcements for the rest of the year. They said, so. Um, like hold your horses, that kind of thing. Like a lot of people had been putting out, uh, had been getting riled up. Um, like basically last week, it was coming to a fever pitch, and it's kind of funny that Nintendo releases these things like right when people are starting <laughs> starting to foam at the mouth for one, yep. uh, which is kind of funny. Uh, I I wonder if they do that on purpose, but um, that'd be amusing. To some degree, yeah. But uh, that that that's that's too good. I I, I don't think they they to do that but um yeah i mean and that was it um the, the there's the, these things are usually jam-packed even with um like updates to existing games and they only had the one um so it's kind of a shame that the um the biggest announcement was a game that already exists you know it's just, <laughs> you know 
uh, it's a it's a welcome remaster. Like uh, like you know, it's not uh, it's it's awesome. But you know, the, your biggest announcement was you know a remaster of of an existing game. You know, so uh, but it, it's good. You know, it, it, the game is portable, going to be portable optional uh, now, which is really good. And especially with RPGs, uh, you know my stance on RPGs. Uh, you know, uh, they they, sh- they should be portable um, because you know uh, you can get a lot more done that way. Uh, anyway, moving on from that, uh, <laughs> this gamer girl stuff. Uh, you, you could take this one away. I know you were you were following this one pretty closely. Yeah, this was pretty amusing. So <clears throat> I saw this there as is, well. But... There is to be a game uh, released, like it's an FMV title, so you got my attention. But it's called Gamer Girl, which so I was like, really? But the the teaser seems to be that you are like influencing events of. I mean, like, I don't think they give a specific brand name, but let's just say a Twitch streamer, you know, someone who streams video games on, you know, a not Twitch platform, whatever, who cares? But I think the idea of the game is to show how toxic the community can be, like the fans and stuff like that, where you, yeah, like... Yeah, I think like, you play you the res- role of a moderator, don't yes, you? Yes, yes. Okay. So, like, you're talking to the gamer girl, whatever her name is, um, and trying to influence her with like real life decisions, but you're like, you're also seeing like, the the fans in the chat can sometimes be creepy, and like I think there comes a point where there's like a stalker in real life, and on one hand, like I get it, like it, it's sending this message that the gaming community can be toxic and awful, and that's like, that that's not wrong, but just the fact that it's a video game and you can make like the shitty stuff happen it like even like it, just the fact that it is a game where you have a degree of control just puts like a bad taste in my mouth where you can make yeah, things I just agree. fucking creepy and like this thing this trailer got blasted so damn hard that the people who put it up like made the video private so like i had to watch the trailer via someone's re-upload and that got downvoted to hell too although not like as a message to the uploader but just about the trailer itself because it's just like like again i get it but mm, and, and like someone posted a picture of the uh i think it was like the publishers or something and it's like all just a bunch of like middle-aged white guys and it's like ah oh, there it is <laughs> <laughs> yeah and uh it'd be something if it, if like uh you know maybe the main the main uh scenario was written by a girl um you know that, that's it kind would of have the a thing a yeah like Obviously, um, they got a woman to tone. act in it and everything, but like that—that that that's doesn't influence the writing. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I'm 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 not down with it either. And also, yeah, like like, it, like again, I see what they're trying to do, but like, like it it it's coming off very uh, poorly, or at least the trailer makes it look that way. Like it's coming off very badly in in execution. Like there there is probably a right way to present this kind of thing, but. I don't think this is it. This might be better off as like a movie where you yeah, maybe don't a horror become movie. the asshole. Yeah. Yeah. No, but uh, I also think that it's very easy to fall into cringe territory by accident, even um, with something it's like this. It's called Gamer Girl. Like, yeah. half of gamers are women anyway. It's called fucking Gamer. Like, I thought Gamer Girl died like in the 2000s, but clearly not. Yeah. Maybe, uh,. Uh, falling, uh, coming from a, a place where, um, you know, <laughs> where, where people don't really have a pulse on things, you know? Well, that that's, kind of thing, you so. know what this makes me think of? Every so often I bring up Red Letter Media, but this brings up something for one of the movies they reviewed. It, it might have been, like, fucking Slenderman or something. But, like, it was written by, like, I think, like, like a 65-year-old white guy or whatever. But the, th- but the thing is, they like, they like but, like, that person is writing how teenagers talk. Yeah. And, and one of them was like, oh, you have much to learn, Grasshopper. And it's like, yeah, in the 2010s, people are referencing <laughs> fucking Kung Fu, Kung Fu with David Carradine from the 70s. Yeah. Like, 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 we don't even do that at our age. That's Jeez. the thing. Yeah, like, I mean, I, I forgot if I've actually said this on the podcast before, but that would be, like... If we wrote a teen movie and we had one of them say, like, we be fast and they be slow, it's like, yeah, it's a Ghostbusters reference. Our friends might get it, but fucking kids don't talk like that, even if they've seen the movie. That's not 
embedded in their minds forever, like it was for people who grew up in the yeah, 80s. They, they have references to their own things in own, own lingo, and uh, exactly. honestly, I, I, I don't want to know it. <laughs> so, like, now this now this doesn't... I'm not necessarily referring to the dialogue in Gamer Girl, because, like, I don't have enough of a sense of that, but, like, again, the name Gamer Girl, like... Gamers did not write that fucking title. <laughs> gamer girl, really? It's, are you yeah, a gamer girl? Like a are you thing. are you hot and you play games? It's like, oh come on, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Marketing. Yeah. Uh, um. So, uh, moving on from that, uh, those are like the biggest uh, news items of the week. Um. Uh, but there was quite quite a few um exciting things. So, uh, I, at the top, probably the biggest game to release this week was uh Ghost of Tsushima. Um, which is probably going to be the last hurrah for the PS4, um, a lot yeah. of people are saying. I've seen uh, which brief makes footage sense. of it. It looks pretty rad. Yeah, it looks like a fun game, but um, just like most uh, Sony games, like after like a year or two, they, they usually put them on PS Plus for free. So um, I, I'm definitely... I, I'm I'm either gonna get it on discount or or wait for um yeah you know, a, I mean you know item. me I'll do discount like I mean I have more than enough of a backlog anyway I'm playing a fucking PS1 game on stream <laughs> yeah I mean um there it, there's a never ending backlog for both of us but uh, because we keep re- returning back to things so well not only but, that uh, it but does like, look cool like as a as a let's player like I play games at a pace so I can't just spend every night playing for like a hundred hours. <laughs> Yeah, um, the uh, impression that people are leaving is that that it has a similar structure to Souls games, but has combat that is much simpler. Um, are we maybe... talking like Sekiro then? No, it, it, it's more like um, Assassin's Creed combat. Okay. Uh, so, so it's 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 basically um, has action for the masses, like similar to Batman. Um, Arkham okay. games okay. kind of kind of stuff so um but you know it, it, it looks cool at least uh and um people are are tending to dig it um probably you know you know sevens to eights uh in in terms of um critical reception just sure, sure. not a bad game just like you know seven states you know so yeah, I mean, um that, that's very good yeah very very good um i i those t- types of games are actually the ones i end up liking the most uh and believe it or not so um and on from that uh you you had a, a title that you you pretty flipped much flipped out about like right away yeah i was quite happy about this because the announcement I, I don't know if the announcement actually came out of nowhere or if i just didn't notice it until the last second but super hot has i think it's like a standalone game called um mind control delete and what came with the announcement is that if you already own the game by such and such a date maybe it was like july 10th or something then you just get it like it's just added to your account for nothing yeah i think it was in um steam early access for a long time uh, okay. and it finally released as a full title yeah it's really cool because the basic gameplay is super hot except that like there's more to it uh f- for one thing you have hp now um you start the game with what appears to be 3 HP, but it turns out that you're given a default mod that's stuck on you, and if you if you play the game more, you could find a different mod that you can choose. Like, I chose one that allows me to do a rush attack, which just goes through whatever and punch an enemy in the face, which is extremely useful for movement and counters, but that removes the default mod, and it turns out that the default mod gave you an extra heart. So I thought your HP was 3 this, this entire time. Nope, it's 2, plus one at the beginning of the game um and as you go through levels you run into little things that say i have two upgrades to offer you which one do you want and one of them can be heal uh like just right now just heal up uh there can be you just move faster guns have more bullets uh every round you start with a random gun every round you start with a katana killing enemies recharges your rush attack faster like there's a bunch of stuff going on and you can go into branching paths on like a level select screen that let you unlock more upgrades i very much look forward to seeing where it can go yeah i hear it's also procedurally generated rather than it uh, seems to be yeah Yeah. i mean it's not like it's not so much that yeah like the first game you play particular levels in order this time it's like oh looks like you're fighting on the subway this time like 
maybe next time you'll be somewhere else. You know, like it, it's a bit like that. Mm-hmm. Um, a couple of gimmicks I've noticed that are different from the original game. In some cases, you know how enemies can have weapons, and if you like punch them, they can drop them. Yeah. Uh, for one thing, I should point out there are some new weapon types which are pretty cool. Like a shuriken, you throw it at a guy, and even if it kills them, you could take it back out and throw it at somebody else. But um, also, some enemies have their... I don't know if it's happened for melee, but I've definitely seen it for guns, I, I think for melee as well, where the, the weapons they're carrying are red just like they are, which means if you kill them, that stuff is gone, like you can't take that weapon. Um, I've seen some enemies, because the enemies are red, I've seen some enemies where parts of them are white, so if you hit them, the enemy will flinch, but you must hit the red parts to kill them. So, like, an enemy might have, like, only the left leg is red. So you have to be very precise to fight that guy. But unlike the base game, you don't have to kill everyone to clear a level. Because you can't. Enemies just kind of keep coming. And you got to manage them. So after you kill X amount, the level just ends. Which is kind of nice. Neat. And the, the other thing that I'll point out that was very different from the previous game, aside from HP... This is just an aesthetic thing. But you know how when you beat a level, it does like the TV static Super thing and then the next hot. level comes in? Super hot. Well, will you still yeah. do that? Oh, one thing I noticed, by the way, I forgot about that actually. When they do the replays, it's slightly fast forwarded and they don't say super hot over it. That was probably uh, like the number one complaint about the previous game. I love it when they say super hot. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's cool, it. but if you want just a straight replay, like you're not getting it without jumping through some hoops. But you know how when you complete a level, like when you're done watching the replay, it does like the TV static thing, sure. or like the CRT static, and then next level. Uh, in in Mind Control Delete, it like it like glitches out. It like artifacts into the next level, which I thought was pretty cool. No, <laughs> it's just an interesting look. <laughs> That's cool. That's cool. Yeah, like I was oh, first like, oh no, and then the game starts. I'm like, oh, they did that on purpose. <laughs> so this is technically the. F- third uh super hot game right yeah super hot vr oh, cause there's well. vr yeah, yeah 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 so i guess it is the third yeah i still didn't wow. play freaking vr i, I, I kinda, like, yeah i haven't the played VR, VR yet either i own it but I, I haven't had a chance to play it so do i same thing i mean i've actually tried it like at like an outlet but now i actually own it but i, I haven't unboxed the psvr because like i'm very bad at opening new things yeah yeah well i i i, I have it all set up i just uh haven't had a chance so um, but yeah, I, I think this is really cool. I mean, I really love Super Hot. Um, I played it uh, across yeah. a couple nights when I when I was in Ireland. It's a solid uh, game. It's like yeah, it's it, really it takes cool. the first game and it just adds cool features. It's it's an evolution. I'll take it. Yeah, yeah, and it's free, so of course you'll take yeah, it. Yeah, I think if you buy it um <laughs> separately, what was it like twenty or thirty bucks or something? But if you yeah, already yeah. own Super Hot, which they had put on discount by the way, in anticipation of Mind Control Delete. Then you just get it. It's like, what, what, like, what a deal. <laughs> yeah, really cool. Um, moving on from that, uh, Paper Mario and the Origami King um, uh, had its release on Friday, uh, and um, the I've seen some samples of the writing in the game, and it's really funny. Um, yeah, from from what I've heard, I, I don't know how happy people were with like the the game overall, like playing it. I think they're kind of middling on it, but the writing seems to be hilarious. Yeah, so uh, I mean, I'm okay with that. I mean, they they they've been making the Paper Mario games um, progressively more um, actiony. Um, yeah. So, uh, I mean, it's not as actiony as Super Paper Mario, which was yeah, like, that was know, the Wii game. Kind of just like a standard Mario game that was paper. I mean, it had the combat screens, but that was definitely the most run around the level and do stuff. It was it was it was a straight up action game. Uh, so. Uh, but this this looks really great, and there's there's even some salty, um, like, uh, like stuff towards the fans, which is actually pretty funny. Um, f- that I saw. If I if I find the uh the quote, I'll uh, I'll look it up. But it, it it was it was really funny. Um, and so I'm I'm excited to play that whenever I get around to it. I am very far behind in the Paper Mario games. I haven't even played through a Thousand Year Door. So I, I watched a friend first. play through that, but I actually haven't seen almost any of the first game, and I've only seen a little bit of the first the game Wii is one, Super Paper Mario. The, the the first one's great. Um, uh, it's it's a it's a classic, and I I uh, but I the GameCube one is is like top notch. Yeah, that's the gold star. Yeah. So the uh, the. I still love the final choice you can make in that game, which has a consequence that I did not expect. (laughs) 
Uh, moving on from that, uh, there's there's been a couple of Arcade Archives releases. Uh, the first one was uh, Gradius, which is uh, kind of redundant if you own the Konami Arcade Collection. Yeah. Uh, but it, 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 this is good, you know, uh, if you if you just want Gradius on its own, that's great. Um, I also like that they gave it its um, uh, its its Japanese name because like the that's what everybody knows Gradius by. Nobody nobody knows it by. Uh, like the ori- uh, original English title, which I think is just, just called Vulcan Venture, I think. Oh, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I don't. It, like, no, it, it wasn't well known in U.S. arcades. Uh, it didn't get popular until the NES, basically. So, um, but uh, yeah, and where it was called Gradius in the U.S. So. Sure, sure. Um, I'm I'm glad that they they decided to stick with the uh, Japanese name. Sometimes I played don't. I played Gradius on GameCube. It was a gladiatorial combat game. <laughs> <laughs> that that game is forgotten by time. I um, like that game all right, actually. Yeah, no, it was it was a good game. It's just nobody remembers it. Yeah, nobody. <laughs> yeah. Um then uh also another this is a more interesting release to me because uh Gradius has been around, you know, you you you, you can get the first Gradius game pretty easily. In a, in a few different spots, but um, they they released Kangaroo, which is first uh, Sunsoft's first major hit in the arcade. Uh, so uh, kind of like uh, you know Konami had uh, you know Frogger. Um, this was like their their game that like launched them that started making them some money. Um, they had a game before that called Icky. Um, which is famous for being a shitty, shitty, shitty game, <laughs> but it was one of the first games released for the Famicom. So and during the bubble era, so like almost everybody owned it. Uh, when you know every everybody that had a Famicom owned it. So <laughs> uh, so they all had this shitty game. It's kind of like um, uh, Balderdash. Um, it, it, was it Balderdash that was the other title uh, that? Uh, no, it's Spelunker. Spelunker <laughs> is just like that. But anyway, um, moving on from this, I thought this was really neat. I, this would have some interest to you, I think. Uh, a an indie title called Yarn Town, which uh, purports to be a um, Zelda-like remake of Bloodborne. So, like, yeah, I don't even know what that means. So, so, <laughs> um, you know, top-down look um, at um, with a top-down view um, of Bloodborne. I guess um, the joke is Yarn Town instead of like Yarnum. Yeah, I think that that's it. Uh, but it's a straight up remake, so uh, they released it for free. It's a fan project, so huh. uh, I would get it be- before you can't. Yeah, before it disappears, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, at least they're not charging money for it. Where right? is that? Like on Steam, or is that just like a? Oh prepared... no, it's not on Steam. It's like uh, IO. So... Uh, let me see if I can find it. Yeah, I mean, um, I'm sure I can Google it up. I'm stop being lazy. Well, I'm 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 in the. Uh, Kotaku article. It's on itch.io for free. Yeah, it is on IO. Okay. Yeah. So I will. I will Yarn add Town. That's so good. Yeah, yeah. It's cool. I mean, um, it, that's certainly your jam. I'm, I'm sure uh, you you might even do a stream of that one one night. Yeah. Not to mention, like I, this doesn't come up very often. Almost never, because they're very like rare and obscure indie projects for the most part, except for like the couple of times Nintendo did it, but, like, one game in the style of another game, like that indie FF7 game that plays, like, a side-scrolling beat-em-up, or, like, that that Nintendo game with Mario and Rabbids, like, the XCOM-style game, you're like, what? Or, um, that Half-Life 2 game that plays, like, Hotline Miami, it's just, like, weird little things that you can do. It just It just entertains me. So here we have Bloodborne, but it plays like Zelda. Like, okay. Like, I mean, it's very rare that you see projects like this, but they just kind of tickle me whenever they come up. Uh, I, I I like D makes too. I mean, um, somebody made like an eight bit version of uh, DJ Hero from back in the day, and that was a lot of fun. Um, that was that was a really cool project. Uh, yeah, but, so... I mean, well, I mean, this this is I I guess you could call this a D make, but like also crossing over of genre because like Hotline Milwaukee is a D make. But it plays like Hotline Miami, just if it were reduced to the Nintendo. Like Bloodborne does not play like Zelda, but this one does. So it's like, oh, yeah, it's it's really neat. Uh, I like it. 
So uh, I like the idea, and I can't wait to play it. So. Yarn Town. That's so corny. <laughs> it's not even with the the H. It's just it's like yarn. <laughs> Silent Mountain or uh, Soundless Mountain. <laughs> yeah, know? there might have been like Silent Mountain or Quiet Mountain or something. Yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. I think it's Soundless Mountain. Yeah, um, for for Silent Hill remake. Um, this was really cool and and something that like popped out of nowhere. But um, Worms Armageddon got an like a genuine update like not like a remaster or anything like that they they like pushed out an update for like a you know for the um, pc game for the pc game um, oh shit <laughs> worms armageddon like if you own it on steam you'll get an update like my um, brother and i played that in like middle school or something <laughs> yeah and i think if you own the like the original original version you know like you know without a launcher I, i'm pretty sure you can you can just download the update from uh the team 17 website that's insane but uh, yeah, it, it, they they added a bunch of features, um, and uh, they added like mod capabilities, like um, like officially, um, and I mean, they, Worms, they did a bunch. Of- like Worms is just that. That's one of those games that's just. Like I can't believe there haven't been a thousand mods already. They probably have actually. Well, well, this is like sanctioned stuff, though. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, it, yeah. It, it, It's something that they're allowing you to do. Um, so yeah, it, it's it's really cool. Uh, they. They, they. This is like the most beloved title in the series. It's the, it's oh, the one yeah. that everybody oh, really yeah. loves. Because after um, this, it went 3D, and it's like I get it, but eh. even the 2D ones after they went back to 2D, um, they w- didn't capture. Yeah, the there's something that's the just kind of pure about Armageddon. Yeah, like Armageddon just like hit everything just right, and um, it I really actually. Did. Used- uh, I used to play this all the time with uh, with my buddies um, in in high school. On when you get cast. good with a ninja rope, you are unstoppable. Yeah, we were we we loved playing this every 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 night on the Dreamcast. It was just so much fun. Um, it it is a really fun, awesome game, and uh, it was it got to the point where like the game it, it's so um, like hard to hit each other. Um, you know, just because it, it's it's like part of the fun is the difficulty. Well, there's, yeah, there's wind, what you want to do. there's trajectory. Yeah, yeah. Um, like we would help each other, like try to hit each other. You know, like like it, well, it's no, like you, golf. You, you know what? You know what's true swag is when you ninja rope in, and you kind of launch yourself horizontally at a guy, so it doesn't count as an attack. So you can bump into a guy and push him without using the push command. Right. So you could just kill a guy at no cost like, and knock just him keep into going. The water. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's just a fantastic title, and uh, just really, really cool that they they added. Um, they're they're showing support for it. I think what was it? Age of Empires two uh, randomly got a got a fucking update like like last year. Yeah, um, and didn't you say that like Diablo two got an update back when you were in college, and you're like, huh? Yeah, it's like it, it, this is like, just to give you an idea. Th- this is ten years after the last update. Yeah, like, like literally ten years. After the last update for for Worms Arden again, I mean, like you know, they fixed it up so it would be playable on modern systems, but that's all they did. This is an actual update to like the that's the amazing, game. yeah. So uh, I'm 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 really excited about that, especially since like this is online enabled and I could play my same friends that you know um, we we that I played on the Dreamcast with. You know, they could play this for free right on Steam for fifteen bucks. Like the game is fifteen bucks. Um, and it, it's well worth it. It's like one of the best party games of all time. It's a, it's so much fun. Um, but yeah, I, I just wanted to throw that out there because like I love that shit. Like that's just so cool. Moving on from that, uh, friend of the show Laz Rule has a new game. Did you did you get a chance to take this out? <laughs> yeah, check I this did. Out? I actually didn't know about this until now. Oh, okay. Uh, you, you need to far, uh, follow our friend on Twitter, my friend. Um, but uh, yeah, Dingletopia. Uh, he he uh, continues to release games for free. Man, you should at least charge a dollar for your shit because I got I may I don't I don't know why you're such a hero, uh, <laughs> but like I want to give you money. Like like you. But his games are horrorable. <laughs> like I would te- I would pay ten dollars for each install installment of uh yeah, the fucker, fucker in the, the blank. Uh, yeah, the fucker games. I mean, I love them. <laughs> Uh, but uh, yeah, this game opens with a parody of the Ninja Gaiden um, like introduction, uh, like the theater, like the Tecmo Theater kind of thing from the NES, and it looks goofy as shit. You're like a gnome in it. Uh, I mean, it's <laughs> um, 
and it's called Nation Under Siege by Orcs. Uh, that's the subtitle. <laughs> Uh, and it looks goofy as shit. I mean, there's some really goofy uh, uh, art in here. It looks almost like an old DOS game, um, which is kind of cool. And a, it looks like it's an RTS title. But like, man, this th- th- you you worked really hard at this game. Like, you you don't you don't have to give it away for free. We'll <laughs> we'll, we'll pay for it, man. So um, of course, the description of the game is funny because that's last rule. Um, I'll, I'll just read it. It's a, a sunny day in Dingletopia, and Prince Dingledorfin and his wise advisor, Forlorn Gump, <laughs> Gumpel, right. are slurping up the Gorpulsen and planning their next conquest. Their life of luxury is soon interrupted, however, when orcs bu- uh, burst into the lands with rattling sabers. So I guess it's supposed to be kind of like the original uh, Warcraft in that way. How will you rule Tinkletopia? Oh, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Genre, epic high fantasy war strategy, Palooza, Bonanza. <laughs> Game info, use your wits and influence to expand your empire, build your armies to attack and defend against orcs, make impossible choices that will echo throughout history. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Nice, nice mulling you um, kind of stuff. Uh, pros, 22 unique units, uh, non-linear nation building and strategy. Those are actually pros and teaches about dwarf lore. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Cons is in a fantasy setting. <laughs> That's Already amazing. Just- destroying your own game is less enjoyable than winning the lottery contains orc imagery <laughs> okay i still have that read me for fucker in the woods like for the for the faq like this game sucks this cannot be fixed <laughs> i i'm i'm just excited uh because les rule is a is a good dude i want to rule i want to rule dingletopia it's so just to give you an idea, everybody that has bought, uh, you know, downloaded this title, they didn't buy it, obviously, on, on Steam has given it a good review, like a positive one. Oh, they Everybody's, know what they're getting at, so. But there's one person, a, only one person that gave a uh, a uh, negative review. Is it's it Lazarus? No, no tutorial. <laughs> <laughs> Game's free, man. You figure it out. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure you don't need it. <laughs> this shit is this this content is stupid as shit, and it's great. Um, so yeah, uh, download it for free. Give it a shot. I mean, you have nothing to lose, and uh, it looks hilarious. Uh, and uh, if you enjoyed any of our previous let's plays with Lazarus content, I'm sure you'll you'll like the sense of humor. And speaking of which, by the way, um, my Clock Tower Two let's play is gonna go public uh, soon. Um, that's not Lazarus. It is not Lazarus, but <laughs> the Lazarus playthrough is going to be two after that, and the next both Clock Tower and oh, the next let's play go. are quite short. So we're we're getting there. We're getting to fucker in the room. Yeah, he he calls all of his fans gulagers, which is hilarious to me. Yes, yeah, bullshit. Uh, we should be called woodsers or maybe roamers uh, or fuckers. That actually makes more sense. That might actually make more sense. <laughs> but uh, I, I just wanted to throw this out there because uh, he's a cool dude and uh, he he deserves the attention. It's really cool. Yeah, he does. Uh, so um, after that, uh, there is uh, the new Pokemon Snap is up for pre-order, I assume, on Amazon Links and uh, Game GameStop and Best Buy. Is that, is that how it's going? I assume. I didn't even check where it's up for pre-order because I don't care about Pokemon anymore. But it's really yeah. cool that they're making a new Pokemon Snap. Like, after... Yeah. Like when was the last one? The only one, <laughs> the N sixty four, and you could buy it on Wii U, I guess the N sixty four title. Yeah, yeah. But like, how how have they not made a new one? And it looks like they finally did. Yeah, they they were really missed an opportunity with the Wii U, but not really because yeah, apparently retroactively, <laughs> no, they didn't. Yeah, no, they didn't. Uh, they would have needed to port it back to Switch anyway. So just like with everything else. Um, I also just wanted to throw a, a quick uh, bone to Panzer Paladin, which is a new indie title on the Switch. It just looks beautiful. It looks like, um, you know, kind of similar to the art style of uh, Shovel Knight, um, but it has that, like, really cool, like, um, uh, like 16-bit pixel art kind of look. Okay. Uh, almost mixed with a the colors of, a, of an NES game, but 
you know, more more than that, but less than that, you know, that kind of thing. It's not like not quite 16 bit, not quite 8 bit, but sure. also better than them. <laughs> but uh, it looks beautiful, and uh, I really want to try it out. Um, moving on from that, uh, I just had a, a, a quick announcement here. Um, we, we we've been talking about uh, uh, the um, editor in chief at uh, Game Informer left recently. Uh, this seems to be kind of an exodus uh, recently. But uh, Chris Kohler, uh, who is a very, very cool person. He worked for Wired.com for a long time, and uh, he's extremely knowledgeable and is on a lot of the retro knots and stuff like that. He was editor in chief uh, uh, on Kotaku for a couple of years, um, and he is leaving uh, journalism to go uh, be the editor uh, in chief of Digital Eclipse's, um, like, content, or, or, like, game history area. Uh, so, like, he'll, he'll be the one to help put together, like, the museum areas of each game, you know, um, you know, and collect all of the, uh, materials and stuff like that that's included in the, uh, supplements and all that stuff. So, uh, I just thought I would throw this out there because, uh, he's a cool guy and, uh, he's also leaving to do something cool. Um, and he's not go going to leave uh, video games. You know, you, you'll still get to see him uh, curate the history for, you know, whatever um, collection comes out from Digital Clips after this. So, um, Also, uh, I, I wanted to drop this because um, on, on CoreCon last week, I did forget this, but uh, I forgot all of, almost all of uh, Pinball Arcade's licensed um, DLC, which is almost all of the game, uh, because of the nature of the game, uh, was, 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 uh, delisted, so I just kind of wanted to, um, throw that out there, because, uh, what ended up happening is the Williams and Bally, um, uh, pinball tables, which are considered to be the best ones of all time, basically, um, the, like, the really good 90s pinball tables, uh, were all made by Bally or or Williams or or Midway, um, they ended up switching uh, the pinball game that they they were working with. They ended up going and uh, to uh, Pinball FX3 instead of uh, uh, Pinball Arcade. So I just wanted to throw that out as a delisted thing. You can no longer get like the Pinball Arcade versions of those things, which is a big bummer. That bottom. that actually that actually reminds me. Speaking of little. Uh, corrections or addendums the previous week. This is this is a, a minor thing, but I think I had said something about certain like Devolver games getting a limited print run from. I had said strictly limited. I think mm -hmm. it should have been special reserve games. A little bit of yeah. it. There's so many limited print games. I apologize. <laughs> no, it's it's kind of it hard wasn't to SLG, remember them It was It was SRG. Excuse me. It's kind of hard to remember them all. Uh, and this was a cool thing that I thought was neat. Uh. Uh, they they uh, the programmers ended up uh, releasing the SNES um, source code for Doom, uh, so like the one that uses the FX chip. Yeah, that's um, kind of cool. So uh, already we have a mod, uh, which was to add circle strafing. Oh. So um, a big, a big and much um, like appreciated mod. So <laughs> uh, I'm sure all kinds of other really good mods will come out for it. Um, you know. Even, even probably going to expand the uh, ROM size because at, at the time they only had, could work with so much, but now you can, you can, um, they could probably expand the ROM size to whatever they want because you could play it on a flash cart or, or you could play it out of a, uh, out of an emulator. So they could probably make the game um, perform better as a result and look better. So uh, just, a, just a cool thing. I uh, just wanted to quickly run over that but i there was some other doom news as well um so uh, i've talked about the mr fpga platform uh many times in the past it, it's a, a really awesome platform where uh it it has um it it, it it's it's a hardware emulation of of uh, many of the consoles it's trying to um uh simulate so it really really good stuff super accurate um, much better than software emulation method but uh so what's cool about that platform is they, they can program it to act exactly like a any combination of um of chips on a motherboard and would act so uh they have gotten a an intel 486 platform running on mister which is bananas 
Do you, do you know what a, a 486 is? Uh, I do not. So it is the um, the platform that Intel had right before the Pentium chip came out. Um, so I'm sure you you know what the Pentium chip is. I mean, know? I've heard the names, but I don't know the significance in you know the 2010s. I don't know what one chip was versus another. Uh, so the Pentium chip is when everybody started getting Windows 95 machines. Okay. Like right then. So it's the dawn of mainstream personal computer use is the Pentium chip. Um, so everything before that, you know, was mostly for people that had offices or were hobbyists. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, or, you know, were really into that kind of thing. And but like the this is right when uh, so the 486 can run all of the early DOS games, and uh, they got Doom running on it, which is <laughs> pretty much as advanced as it needs to get. Um, I think it can run everything up until uh, 3D um, accelerating games can uh, need to run. So uh, you could play um, you know King's Quest games on it, no problem. <laughs> um, you can play Doom now. Um, uh, you it it. it has been able to play uh, Wolfenstein for a long time, um, but uh, it, it's just really exciting. Uh, it can it can simulate an old uh, an entire old old computer like you and and old Windows, which is really really impressive from a little tiny box. You don't even need to buy components anymore. Like they they simulate the components. <laughs> so like if if you want a uh, a a PC from that era, like you you don't have to build it anymore. Like um, you know, for the hell of it, like a, like a lot of uh, like um, hardcore uh, Windows nerds do. You know, like LRG, you know, lazy game reviews or whatever. L- LG- LGR. LGR, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you don't need to do that anymore, you know. You could straight up, you know, simulate it with extreme accuracy. So I just thought that was really, really awesome. And um, I'm excited for the future of that. Um, they're, they're, they also, uh, this is kind of a, a letdown after that, but uh, they're they're getting close to uh, perfect Game & Watch. Uh, yeah, I can't wait till they <laughs> capture the uh, the three f- FPS. Um, it's a little harder than you think uh, because you know you, they need to uh, they need to come up with a, a, a graphical interface for it. Um, well, yeah, you know. it's like the Tiger Electronics <laughs> things where there's no animation. There's just like the places where the sprites can light up. Yeah, yeah, it's almost uh, it's it's really accurate now, so it's it's kind of cool. Um, also, uh, I, I I forgot about this last week, but um, uh, Nintendo and Lego announced a, a new announcement. Uh, other than their like Mario system stuff, um, they uh, released a trailer to show um, this new Lego NES. Uh, which has a, like a mini NES, a mini cartridge that you you build all out of Legos, and um, a crank um, driven like CRT that that that'll show a scene from Mario, uh, and you can crank it and and make <laughs> it work. So it, it, it's it's really neat looking, and it would be something that would be kind of a, a cool thing to have around. Um, but it is expensive as all get out. Um, yeah, not I mean, that I and, didn't and think like, that would be the case. I, I don't know if even I can say in fairness for this, but I'll do it anyway. In fairness, Lego is always expensive. Not like this. Uh, not like this. Not like this. Um, it's like two hundred thirty dollars for this. Yeah, thing. I mean, there it's, you go. <laughs> that's a lot. Uh, I was expecting. You know, because it's Lego, like something over a hundred dollars. Like, yeah. like I, I wasn't quite expecting maybe a hundred fifty, but like two, two hundred bucks. I mean, that for for um, more than what the system uh, it's emulating, <laughs> yeah, is worth. Um, far by you can. That's basically you could buy one of these for a half of an NT mini. <laughs> Which you know you should be buying the NT Mini <laughs> if you're if you're if you're plopping down money like that. But you know it's just kind of funny. But um, it it is cool and it's really neat. You know it has a Mario jumping on it. It like it's it's a neat looking contraption and a neat functioning contraption uh, that you also build, which is fun. But eh, you know. Um, also, I uh, just wanted to throw throw out a few other pop culture things. Um, Last week, I forgot to mention that Tron 3 had been announced, uh, which is actually really exciting. I am a huge 
a uh, fan of the Tron universe. Uh, I really love it all. I, I haven't had a chance to watch the um, cartoon, which I hear is quite good. Um, but I love uh, both movies uh, quite a bit. I love the aesthetic more than anything. Yeah, the aesthetic's uh, I, amazing. Um, the aesthetic and the music in both movies are is just fantastic. Uh, I also love the original arcade game. It, it, it's quite fun as well. So, um, I, I I think it, uh, and I really really love Tron 2.0, which is uh, the first person shooter game by Monolith Studio. Uh, that is just phenomenal. It's a lot of fun. I think that's on Steam still. Uh, so. Uh, definitely look out for that, but uh, it, it, that was that was a really great game. But um, apparently they're they're getting like a lot of um, the same people together as um, as you know Tron um, the the second Tron movie. What was that called? Uh, Reloaded. Legacy. Legacy. I'm sorry. Um, they are. I I, th- I according to the article I read, they're in talks with Daft Punk uh, to do the music again, which is just great. Um, Daft Punk is one of my favorite bands. Um, probably my uh, second favorite band. So, <laughs> what's your favorite? Um, Gorillas. Yeah, Gorillas is number one, but uh, that's a good segue, right? <laughs> yeah, there we go. Yeah, did, did you get to hear the new song in uh, Gorillas' Song Machine? Yeah, I actually like it quite a bit. It's very that 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 first beat just hits you that do 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 like just immediately. Freaking great. Yeah. Gorillaz released a new song called Pac-Man, and the music video features uh, 2D playing a Pac-Man arcade machine. Just thinking about Pac-Man stuff. And Russell is just off somewhere else punching his punching bag to the beat, which is pretty amusing to watch. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of people in the comment section on YouTube are like, dude, it turns out he's punching to the beat. But, like, the main thing I was thinking of was that one little mini game in Rhythm Heaven Fever. Oh where yeah, you're, yeah. Where you're the boxer punching mm-hmm. the inflatable, or no, you're inflating your arms to punch the bag. So it's like go go go, boom, boom, boom. <laughs> like it just made me think of that whenever Russell was doing anything in that video. Absolutely. Uh, this might be my um, my my like second favorite song out of. I song quite like this one. Yeah. Yeah. This one. Uh, I think Momentary Bliss is really fucking good. Uh, it's a really 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 good song. It's one of my favorite Gorilla songs actually. I'm gonna I would have even to give say... that. An, I'm gonna have to give that another listen because I've I think I've only heard each song once. Um, Pac-Man just hit me the right way immediately, but I'm gonna have to go back to the others. Yeah. This um, Pac-Man also kind of help, uh, makes me think of a little bit uh, about uh, Sleeping Powder, which is also one of my favorite oh, songs by the okay. by Gorillaz. But um, uh, I, it has some like similar elements. Like Every Gorilla song is different, but uh, this it had some um, like callbacks, if, if you will, to... Uh, yeah, Gorillaz, stuff. Gorillaz d- does that every once in a while. Yeah. Um, and uh, at the end of the video, they mentioned that Sound Machi- or Song Machine... We'll be back in, I think they said September. It's not too long away. No. So, you know, okay. I'm okay with this. More Song Machine. Do it. Yeah, <laughs> I, 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 I really have to hand it to them in, in order to stay relevant. They've, they've, they did something new. Uh, this yeah, time. they're, they're doing their stuff. They're releasing it on YouTube, and each song has a full video to go with it. Like, this is, this is pretty next level. Yeah, and they, they also, um, uh, also do little skits in between while you're waiting. So um, Oh, you get a little calls, which they also released today, by the way. Same day as Song Machine. They had the little, I forgot what they're called, the little like 45-minute like phone call sounding thing. I, I, I mean, what, what's cool about this is this is, this is going to end up being what, uh, you know, all together it's going to be a new album, a, yeah. a whole new album worth of songs. But it, in the end, it it's more content because they're releasing like a video for every single song. So uh, yeah. it's just... It's so cool, um, and um, Weird Al did the same thing with his last album, and uh, he did, ended up doing really uh, better than he ever had done before because nice. of that. Um, mostly because like it, people stay interested in it when you trickle stuff out instead of just dump everything all at once. Um, so it also yeah. gives you a, a chance to uh, like replay and re-listen to the thing that just came out, you know, so you can be like, oh, no, I need to go back to that rather than just moving to your favorite song every single time, you know? Yes. Um, so I, I, I really think that's, it's cool. It's just like, ah, no, I'm going to listen to that, uh, 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 again. And, uh, you know, it, sometimes you find, uh, with Gorilla so- songs, especially, I found that I, 
the, sometimes when I first hear them, I don't like them nearly as much as I I grow to love them. Um, you know, it's it's the the songs are so unusual and um, and complicated that uh, sometimes I I don't get them on first, yeah, first listen. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, and what, one other thing I'll mention, by the way, is that the Gorillas have had crazy music videos and even little interludes for their stuff for years and years, but a lot, a lot of this predated YouTube. Like their YouTube channel has uploaded a bunch of the stuff, but not all of it. Like you would have to go to concerts to see some of these videos. Sure. But with with Song Machine, they are YouTube videos. Like this is, um, I don't know if it's the first time ever. I I think no, because they did it with um. Sleeping powder. Well, that's just one song, but I mean they did it, it with a um. Yeah. Yeah, they they did it with um. Damn, not not humans, because humans had like a visualizer. Well, no, they still they still did at least some songs with humans. But yeah. the, the the point is, they released songs as YouTube videos, so you can go back and not only listen to them but also watch them. Because you would buy Gorillaz albums and you would listen to them, but you can't watch the music video again unless you find somebody on YouTube who'd managed to upload it, or if you found or, or you found the, the DVD somehow. <laughs> yeah, so like yeah. here, like this is the YouTube video. Like you got it. You can watch the music video anytime you want. Especially yeah. that one, um, Saturn's Bars, which is a fucking 360 degree, like, animated music video. Yeah, yeah, crazy. That's insane. <laughs> yeah, no, they, uh, what I like about this project is not only is the music good, which is enough, like, the music is fantastic. Um, but it's and, playing as a lore and stuff on top oh, of Oh, yeah, that. like, it, it, they, that's why they're my favorite band. There's nothing else like them, um. And so, like, it, it, it's it's just so cool, um, and the, and the mu- music is fantastic. It's just so good, um, and it continues to be. It, it's not like they've yeah. fallen off a cliff or anything. You know, it's like the, they've they've kept up the quality, which is hard to do. Um, but they they've been putting out a lot of music in the last like three years, um, which yeah, after that major hiatus, a, a, a gigantic hiatus, and then. You were with me at the, at the Now Now tour. He said we're not going to return in another twenty five years. Like this was the last Gorillas thing you're going to get. For yeah, except it years. wasn't. Like... It, it, except you know this whole big project that that he just released it was so cool. Um, you, and uh, next one, uh, I believe you could take over because I, I know a, a, very little about it. Yeah, well, we're gonna. Instead of front loading our RC with somber news, we're gonna back end it. But yeah, rest in peace to Joanna Cole. Uh, Joanna Cole is a name that, if you're around our age, you may like be like, I think I recognize that name. She is the author of the Magic School Bus books. Oh which, yeah, that's right. Yeah, those are a major part of uh, a lot of our childhoods. Mine even, included. E- even if, yeah, and even if you didn't necessarily read the books all the time. There, TV show there, too. there was the TV show, which had a very catchy theme, by the way. I've only seen like maybe an episode, but I read a bunch of the books back then. Um, th- there was, I think, there were a couple of console games, like on Genesis or something. Uh, I-, I played a PC game when I you're. Think there inside. was a Sega Kids game. Uh, yeah, I'm yeah, probably. Sure you're right. uh, I played a PC game, like a Windows game, where you're inside Arnold's body. That was one of the books. Like you're you're inside the human body, and you had to be sneezed out, like in the book. Although in the game, you also have the option of feeding Arnold's like some sort of hot pepper and getting sweated out. So there's like an alternate end, which is kind of cool. It's not but, the alternate end you would uh, conclude to. <laughs> it Probably. was not, but you know what? I'll take it. Uh, it no, like they're, they're genuinely solid, fun, uh, educational books. And I think they hold up. Yeah, I, I I really loved them when I was a kid. Uh, actually, one of my favorite memories is uh, my brother, uh, my, my parents and my brother used to, uh, I have a much older brother. He's seven years older than me. Uh, so when I was like, you know, um, five or six years old, uh, you know, my uh, you know, I would still maybe maybe younger than that. You know, maybe um, you know four. You know that kind of thing. Um, my my parents and my brother would still read to me. You know, you know before going to sleep, mm-hmm. and um, uh, my my brother used to read me it with like all the voices of all the kids. Oh. So, like he, it was just the best. It was so cool. Um, the these books were also uh, known for using a comic book style. Um, 
uh, like word balloons and stuff like that. Um, That's right. I forgot about that. Yeah, that that, that was actually an unusual thing about them at the time. Um, uh, they they were they were structured like a comic book, um, which is which is really neat, but still gave you all the information and also had lush um, illustrations and all that stuff. So. The illustrations were like. Most of the they fun. They were basically were widescreen books. too, because like they had the yeah, like they were, yeah, they were long, long horizontal book. books. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. Very good so, stuff. Very, very. They were sad. more widescreen than the TV show because that was in the yeah. CRT era. Good, good, uh, good point. Yeah. And uh, another bummer moment and uh, very unexpected. Um, yeah, this came out of nowhere. Uh, Grant Imahara from uh, Miss Mythbusters, uh, th- um, th- fame. Uh, passed away of a, a brain aneurysm. Um, a, a, as a young guy, I think he was in his uh, er, early 50s. So, um, very big bummer. If you had ever watched uh, MythBusters, which uh, you know is a it was a cultural institution when it when it was airing, um, he was one of the like the side group, um, the like the B group, um, and uh, he was also. Uh, well known in the special effects industry, uh, he had worked on uh, like the Star Wars prequels, and I think up up to the the newer uh, Star Wars. Uh, he's a very he was a very gifted um, robot robotics engineer. Uh, yeah. So uh, he worked you know in special effects and did all kinds of things with special effects and and robotics, and it, it's really big shame. He's also by all accounts a really awesome dude. Um, like nobody's ever said a bad thing about the dude. Um, very lighthearted, um, very fun to and entertaining to watch uh, on the TV show. So um, I, w- I was really bummed out. Adam Savage, uh, uh, you know, um, posted a, a really um, a, a bunch of nice things about him. Um, and uh, Carrie Byron, uh, who's his par- one of his partners, uh, posted a lot of really nice things about him. It, it's it's just a shame. And you know, it, there's nothing he could have done. Uh, you know, he's just a random death. <laughs> you know, yep. it's just one of those things. Brain aneurysm. How, how do you defend against that? You, you can't. So, um, real, really, really sucks. Um, and uh, I think that's all I have for this week. What? How about you, Lotus? Uh, you know what? Now that I think about it, very quick little updates. Uh, one of them is that I am Eight Bit is selling physical Switch and PS4 copies of Untitled Goose Game, which is kind of amusing, and oh, yeah. and uh, limited run games uh, this this upcoming Friday. So what is that going to be? The twenty fourth. Uh, they're going to be selling physicals of uh, Papers Please for the Vita because that game wouldn't make sense on anything else like you you require mouse movement so the video will be a touch screen that's the next best thing it would probably also do well on the switch honestly mm-hmm. but they're doing a vita release and um also the return of the obra din i think that's ps4 and possibly switch i'm not 100 percent, but they're doing obra din so that's kind of cool yeah, I, I I really need to check that out because like a yeah, lot I've of... heard it's very good yeah i hear here it's it's a good one so um but uh yeah i i think that's all i have for this week um so uh please remember to subscribe to the corrective consciousness youtube and soundcloud pages while there please give us thumbs ups likes and five star ratings on itunes it helps promote and spread awareness of the show and any bit of encouragement helps keep the show going also please don't complain that there wasn't a tutorial you should you should have figured out our podcast uh you can also yeah, catch us on thir- <laughs> thursday for our sister podcast we could charge for this um <laughs> corrective consciousness the podcast where we explore the inanity of pop culture we're gonna do a really nice profile on uh, one of our favorite series castlevania what wait what i i hate castlevania <laughs> especially the n64 one that's the only one I've ever owned and beaten. <laughs> I know. That's I, mean, I, I beat the arcade one, but I don't own that. Really? You're yeah, out. the only games I beat are the 64 one and the fucking Japanese-only arcade game. <laughs> that arcade game is not worth it. <laughs> Finally, you can friend me as Vise the Bold on Steam, PSN, Xbox Live, Twitter, and whatever else. And you can follow me on my YouTube channel, Lotus Prince. You can hit me up on Twitter at at Lotus Prince, and finally, if you are interested in seeing my videos early, like Clock Tower 2 on PS1, uh, 
uh, seeing exclusive but- live streams. <laughs> I, I got caught up because it says something different. Uh, selecting upcoming games for me to Let's Play or getting in conversations with me and other patrons on Discord, then perhaps consider swinging by my Patreon account, which can be found at patreon.com slash lotusprints. All right, everybody. We'll catch everybody on Thursday. Until next time, everyone. I think. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, my line. <laughs>